G'day, Greg Butler here from the South Australian No-Till Farmers Association. And today we're at Tarnie Pastoral at Gurley in New South Wales. And we've been installing the Aquatil system onto a corn planter. I guess, Andrew, we've been here for about two days now. Yep. And um, I think putting on this single row machine has certainly been a lot easier than doing a double <laughs> row machine. Row. Yep. Yeah, a lot easier, a lot more room. Up until this point, we've basically been doing the connections and, uh, and rinsing the lines out. And um, I guess we've uh, reinvigorated the skis we used on the... Uh, on the first unit um, and they seem to have fitted quite well. Onto the arm of the cedar we've welded this blue bracket and with some spaces that holds the uh, the ski and on the bottom of the ski there is the high pressure water jet nozzle. In some cases we've got the nozzle by itself without a trailing disc just to look at the cutting performance. On others we've got the uh, water jet in front of the disc to look at that as a system and a couple we haven't uh, fitted a, uh, a water jet out to at all just to look at uh, how that goes. In terms of plumbing around the back we account for the hydraulic folding machine um, using a, a flex line which uh, connects into our into our manifold and that allows the uh, the flexibility that we need for folding. Good day to look at the Aquatil technology. I'm joined by Mike Burgess. G'day Mike, how are you going? G'day Greg, nice to be here. Um, what are you finding in terms of farmers interest in the technology? Greg, with the amount of trash we're seeing in no-till systems these days, this is a perfect answer. All right, there's a bit of adaption to be done, but I, I see a real application in most of the cereals, particularly in hard crops like linseed. From what I've seen of it working in the paddock, it really does an excellent cutting job, cutting through that stubble. So Mike, where do you see other applications for the water jet technology in northern Australian farming systems? Certainly applying nitrogen and phosphorus, but there's a lot of people would like to apply nitrogen liquid and this fits that perfectly, mm -hmm. absolutely perfectly. And it gives us flexibility in that timing of when you can apply it. The other thing we probably haven't discussed is this retrofit system, if you go down that path, it'll fit most planters. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to go and buy a new planter. You know, you can look at your existing technology you've got on your place and say, well, we can adapt this to fit. Yep, so one of the things in the south we've been really focused on is time of sowing because when, when it, we're trying to sow and the soil's soft, it's where we're really exposed to hair pitting and particularly early morning when there's dew or late at night or if some rain comes in, we, we, you know, we might be down to an eight or 10 hour sowing day. If we can move that out to a 20 hour day or a 24 hour day, that has a massive economic return from the crop productivity benefit through time of sowing alone. How important is time of sowing and, and uh, I mean the soils where we're out here today at Gurley are, are extremely plasticine like and going through the linseed I mean it's just a hair pitting city <laughs> type thing but um, you know we're able to, to do that so is time critical. of sowing? Critical, critical up here mm -hmm. and we've probably followed the trend from down south where we're doing all, trying to do dry sowing and that's got a few hairs in because we have probably a lot more rainy showery weather which can come in and get the crop up and then not get any rain afterwards which is it's difficult. Whereas if we can sow on time, this will allow us to get a little bit of moisture into the seed bed and it'll allow us to get the grain up possibly all in one go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll allow us to start on the start on the date we want to go with. Then we farm southeast of Moree um, on undulating country. Um, we've just been testing the Aquajet machine on um, linseed stubble here today, which is a particularly tough sort of a stubble and that was what picked our interest in whether we can get something that will cut stubble to make it a bit better to try and plant through it. So, and um, with the field day today, yeah, it's certainly showing a lot of promise in terms of um, cutting the stubble. So, so it's just a matter of um, working out some of the engineering problems of just mounting equipment on to the planters to get it all working. Here we have some linseed stubble that uh, has been sown over by the disc only and we can see it hasn't really cut it very well. Um, at this end we have some hair pinning and the uh, seeds have been deposited into the stubble and uh, without any seed soil contact they're not going to perform pretty very well at all. At this end here it hasn't really cut it whatsoever. Here's some linseed stubble that's been cut with the water jet only so there's no disc involved here and we see a nice clean cut with virtually uh, no disturbance of the soil whatsoever or the stubble around it. This row here is being cut with a water jet and then followed by the disc. We see uh, that the linseed uh, um, stubble here has been cut very well and then the disc has been able to come through and even though there's a bit of debris in the, in the uh, furrow, there's certainly no hair pinning even though this soil is still soft and, uh, and still very moist. 
Just wondering what your impressions are of the efficacy of the product and how it's changed. Yeah, right. I loved the little rig, loved the concept. Um, obviously, it was it was raw, but it was we could see, and I think you the response from the growers then was you could they could just see how that could be applied in what they were doing. You've taken it further. You've taken on some new innovations with the system, beefed it up, more horsepower, more rows. Uh, I was actually surprised by how powerful the jets are today. But again, once you put it down on the ground, it's doing its job. You're not hearing anything, nothing's blowing out. It's just doing a really neat job of cutting that slot. We're putting corn seed in down into moisture here at an inch and a half. Beautiful. Yep, no worries. Last year in sort of the little demo unit, yep. and you've come out today to see something's a bit more advanced. I'm just wondering what you think about the uh, the efficacy, the change and improvement in the system since uh, you saw it last. Massive change. Yeah, it's a it's a product that I think that we can definitely use. One for cutting our heavy straw load, which we certainly have, and we're having trouble with heavy straw load moisture. Hey. Oh, first sort of some um, nitrogen application using uh, NH3. Um, coal flow, um, injecting that at high pressure into the soil um, so you're not disturbing the soil, should be able to do it in crop between rows, um, that would be what I would be thinking and you could combine that with doing an application of your nitrogen prior to planting, getting your tracks cut in and then planting straight in those tracks, that's the way I would see it. So you're doing two jobs at once.